What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Minecraft. So good to have you here. We're starting out today's episode on the hill on the other side of the river so that we can take a look at the completed enchanting cave. Go ahead and think back to the mental image you took at the end of last episode, and then compare it to this image that I'm showing you right now of what the cave looked like. And now, take a look at the finished product. Oh, isn't it beautiful? We have the green going all the way across. We have some of the glow berries down here in the lower section. We brought the dripstone up and around all throughout. We turned that whole stone pillar over there into dripstone. And overall, it is looking pretty good from out here. But the outside view is nothing compared to actually being in the magic cave. When walking into the cave from the storage building, it's always just magical to arrive here to see the, all the plants and all the greenery. And now it goes all the way off into the distance in the cave. The only issue I'm having in here is that Endermen are spawning lower down and then teleporting in and then stealing grass blocks or leaving grass blocks in places they don't belong. Like this one, I'm pretty sure an Enderman put this here. We'll have to find a way to remedy that in the log run. Oh, and there's there's the pig. But we'll take care of that in the future. I'd like to start today by looking at our diamonds. I've decided that there's really no sense in just sitting on diamonds. I can always go out and get more if I need more in the future. So I think it would absolutely be beneficial for us to turn these into armor and tools, get them enchanted, and go from looking like this to being blue and shiny all over. So we're gonna need a hat, we're gonna need a chest plate, and there's the advancement. We're gonna need leggings, we're gonna need boots. And then I'm gonna make a sword, and I'm gonna make an axe, and we've got 10 diamonds left. So you know what? We're gonna make a shovel, we're gonna make a second pickaxe, and we'll save the remainder. I spent some time at the spider farm between episodes, so I've got 42 levels. That means we should be able to get five good enchantments out of the enchanting table. So the things I'm going to prioritize are respiration or aqua affinity on the helmet, feather falling on the boots, looting on the sword, or protection four on any of the armor. And if I can get any of those, those will be what we take first. This is gonna break pretty quick, so I think I would like a silk touch diamond pickaxe. Let's go with that. Oh yes, once again, perfect pickaxe. Efficiency four, unbreaking three, silk touch. Oh my goodness. The luck in this world is unbelievable. That is fantastic. I think I'm gonna go with protection four on the chest plate because that's going to get us a ton of extra defense. And there we go. That's actually the best chest plate that we could possibly get. We don't need anything more than that. Oh, respiration three, yes, that's a good one. Ah, uh, just respiration. Not the best, but we'll live with it. Let's see what we get on the boots. Dev Strider and Protection. Okay, again, not the best, but good enough to keep. All right, we're down to our last enchantment we can do with our levels. I think I'm gonna have to go for efficiency on the axe. Efficiency and unbreaking. Pretty good, pretty good. And with that, we have a new decent set of tools. We have now entered a new era of Minecraft. The Diamond Age. Oh, that feels good and that looks good. So with that all done, with our gear all upgraded, now what are we going to do today? Well, in all honesty, the starter base is pretty close to done. I'm not really planning on doing too much more with this. I kind of told you guys in a previous episode about what I was hoping for the general layout of it and that I was gonna do something with the cave, but we're done with the cave. We've added the tall tower in the back. All that's really left to do is add some decorative pedestals here on this side and in the front over there. And then the starter base is gonna be done and we're gonna move on to something new. Now that involves going across the river 
There's been a little block of cobblestone there for quite a while now that has marked where I want to bridge to. So we've got decorative pedestals to build, and then we're gonna build a big fancy bridge all across this river. And then over here on this side of the river, we're going to start the new project that we're going to be working on. However, before we do that, there is one little situation that I need to remedy. You see, I've got access to a lot of building blocks. I've got most of the wood types. We've got lots of different stones. Now that I have silk touch, it'll be even easier to get normal stone. But what we don't have are mangrove wood or sand. I've got 16 pieces of sand to my name, and sand is what we use to make glass, and I've got very little glass. So before we move on and finishing up the base and then getting on to the next project, I would like to go out and try to find a desert for sand and possibly a mangrove swamp to get us that last beautiful wood type. Based on the parts of the world that we've explored previously, I know that there are warm biomes over in this area. So what I think we'll do is use this map and we'll come across here to that area and then explore around to see if we can find what we're looking for. So I hope you guys are ready for an adventure because we're going to get geared up and we're going to head out. So one of the trickiest things I'm running into right now in terms of going out and exploring is just limited inventory space. We don't have shulker boxes and because we haven't been to the nether I don't even have blaze powder to make an ender chest. I could potentially take a donkey or a llama with me but when I'm exploring new terrain that could be really difficult. So. I think what I'm going to do is just leave behind as much as I possibly can, only take the bare minimum of what I need, and hopefully our inventory won't get too clogged too fast. Well, it looks like the sun is starting to set, but I think we've got enough time to head out on the beginning of our journey before it does. Let's go! Wait, 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 wait. Before I leave, I definitely need to grab more food. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's go. Oh my goodness, the Depth Strider boots. They make me so fast in the water. I forgot I grabbed those. Depth Strider is a great enchantment. Okay, this time for real. Let's go. Well, we've made it across most of the map, traveling parallel to things we've already seen. We're starting to get into the warmer biomes. So hopefully in the very near future, we'll come across a desert or a mangrove swamp. I mean, it's not a desert, but I do see a lot of sand. These are some pretty big beaches. So I guess if needed, I could come here and dig up some sand. This is all so far away from the base that I wouldn't feel too bad getting rid of these beaches, but in the end it would be a very limited supply of sand. I think after I sleep through the night, I'm gonna turn north, head up the north border of this map. We might just circle the perimeter of this map like we did on the other one and get a general sense of what biomes and what temperatures we can find on this map. You know what? Now that we have silk touch, we could get bees. I can collect beehives. Yeah, give me a second and let me see if I can get these bees back in their hives. Oh, two bees are in the hive, but I think I can get this third one in. If he's fast and gets in before any of the others gets out. Yes. Total bee location. We've got a bee nest with three bees inside. So maybe if we can't find any deserts or other interesting stuff, we can switch plans and make some sort of beehive. Well, I've done a bit of sailing. We've come across a normal swamp, which may lead us to a mangrove swamp. But also over here to the left, we've got ourselves another village. And that means we've got ourselves an opportunity for saddles. Diamonds, those are good. 
Ooh, that's a leather worker. Those are the buildings that can have saddles. Shame. Well, we got two diamonds and some other stuff, but all in all, the village has nothing that really interests me. Whoa, holy cow, look at that sky island. That's kind of awesome. We're gonna have to keep this in mind. I'd love to build something up there. Looks like we've got some sunken ruins. I would love to find a treasure map. Ooh, a whole ship. That's definitely gonna have a treasure map. My only concern is that if any of these drowned have a trident, that could be a bit dangerous. Although, we've got some good gear for that now. Man, with Respiration 3 and Depth Strider, these guys don't stand a chance against me. Oh man, there are a ton of them though. That one's got a fishing rod. Oh, and that one's got a Nautilus shell. I definitely want to kill him. Because Nautilus shells are very rare. And if a drown is holding one, they will always drop it. It's been some time since I've had to fight horde of drowned with that many zombies in it. Here we go, buried treasure map. So these sunken ruins are another one of the locations where we can use our brush. Wheat. Anything I find that I don't want, I'm just gonna leave in the chest because I don't have the inventory space for it. Oh, that's a shirt. Let's sail over here and check out this sunken ship. I've mentioned it a few times already, but... Depth Strider and Respiration make all this underwater exploration so much easier. Ooh, now that's a chest full of goodies. got a bunch of good stuff including some emeralds which I'm really excited about and now I'm gonna check out this treasure map because this ship and that ruined structure where I got the other one are so close I'm assuming that the treasure maps are gonna lead to the same place so I'm going to not fill one of them in because unfilled in treasure maps look really cool and we could potentially use it as a decoration later so I'm gonna hold on to one of them for decorative purposes but let's see where this one leads us. Oh, right there. This ship basically crashed on the buried treasure. That is quite unfortunate. So there are a few ways to find buried treasure. The way I've found that is the easiest is to use the F3 screen. And if you can get your coordinates within the chunk, which are displayed below your world coordinates in the brackets, so that the first one is nine and the last one is nine, then you're right on top of the buried treasure. There it is. Let's see what we got. Ooh, yes. Give me the iron, give me the emeralds. Give me the heart of the sea for sure. I don't need this log. The gold. And I can turn those into ingots. A potion of water breathing. I mean, respiration's doing pretty good for me, but that could potentially be super helpful in an ocean monument or something like that. Well, the other treasure map I'm leaving blank to potentially use as a decoration, I may as well fill this one in all the way so that it could potentially be used as a decoration as well. And then my inventory's full, so we'll probably just cut back across the map to get home as quick as we can. On second thought, I think I'll keep making my way around the perimeter. Hopefully we don't run into anything too interesting. If we do need to take anything more home, I really don't need this piece of rotten flesh. And we can also get rid of the iron nuggets and maybe a few of the other things too. Guys, I just got excited because I found a village. But then I looked at the map and realized, yeah, that's our village. This, this, oh, yep. There's our base. <laughs> We're home. So I got back to my base. I put everything away, cleared out my inventory, and now I'm looking at the maps, deciding how it is I want to explore. Because on one hand, we know this area 
was pretty warm, and so there could potentially be more warm biomes in this direction. But I really would like to try and stick on the four maps that surround my base, just because that way I'll make sure I'm finding the closest things around me, that I'm not traveling way far when I only need to go a little distance to get somewhere I need. So I think I'm just going to continue going around the perimeters of maps just to really get a good idea of what's around me and hopefully find the biomes we're looking for. So let's see how that goes. this guys ocean monument ocean monument i don't know if i've ever seen two ocean monuments this close to each other Ooh, guys that's a warm ocean ruin that's the kind of place that has the potential to get us a sniffer egg and this is a very warm looking area in the world this is a good <gasps> mangrove mangrove Oh, yes! Yes! I knew that this warm area was a good sign. Well, unfortunately, this structure seems to have generated on the land, and there's not a lot of sand around. And so, I only found two blocks of suspicious sand, and we did not get a sniffer egg. Which is unfortunate, but we found our last wood type. Oh, this is good. This is really, really good. Well, I grabbed a bit of mangrove and a bit of mud, but what really matters are the mangrove propagules. Now I'll be able to farm up as much as I need. Thank you, mangrove swamp, for being present in my world. Looks like we've got ourselves a savanna village. I don't know the exact numbers on how rare or common villages are, but I feel like every time I go exploring, I find many of them. And I'm okay with that. They've got good stuff. Ooh, empty maps. <gasps> Guys. Guys, it's a saddle. Oh my gosh, guys. Do you see what I have in my hand? Oh, this is the best day ever. Oh. Tall grass is also something of a unique item. I, I can talk more about that in a second, but we have a saddle. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. We have a saddle in the palm of our hands. This is so exciting. That was so out of the blue. Sir, you guys have the best village of all the villages. Wow, that's a lot of meat. That is why I've been checking every village I've come across. I knew, I knew we would eventually have to find a saddle. I hereby declare this village Bestville because it is the best and I love it. I'm partially tempted to just find some horse out here in the wild and tame it and put the saddle on it and ride it home. But I think I actually do want to wait, get back to our horses that we have at home. Oh, this is so exciting. I didn't know when in this world we were going to be getting a saddle. And I've had some plans that I've been putting off until we got one, and now we have one. No matter what else happens today, this was a very successful adventure. Wow. This savanna just goes and goes forever. I'm excited for the armadillos that are coming in the next big Minecraft update that are going to live here in the savanna. In case you hadn't heard, Armadillos won the mob vote this year in Minecraft Live, and so here in the savannah we're going to be getting new adorable creatures that curl up into a ball. We'll have to come check it out. We don't know exactly when that update is coming, but I'm tentatively thinking that it's going to be in May of next year. <sighs> horses? I could... <gasps> oh, no, we, we don't got time for horses. 
because we have completed our quest. Wow. I think it's literally going to be off the map here in the top corner. A desert and a mesa. Sand and terracotta. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. We did it, team. We found what we were looking for. A beautiful desert. With a huge river running through the middle of it. I'm definitely taking some cactus. Ooh, we've got a desert temple. And then we've got a ruined village next to it. I'm curious. Desert villages always spawn with camels. I don't know if ruined desert villages spawn with camels. But we're going to go down and find out. I would love to get a camel. All right, here's the plan. We're going to go for the temple first. We're going to sneak in through this back doorway. Get the upper areas lit up. I've had bad experiences with creepers dropping down on my head in these desert temples. Here we go. Poke our heads in. This floor looks safe. Slipping down into the main level. Everything seems safe so far. That's good, that's good. These temples have some really dark corners. Alright, I've lit the place up decently well. Now... Oops. If we dig down here... We can make our way down to the bottom. You gotta be very careful in here because of this pressure plate. See pressure plate will trigger the trap that's hidden underneath. I don't know what these ancient people were thinking rigging this whole place up with TNT, but you definitely don't want to set it off. All right, what have we got? Bones, gunpowder's good. I've got a string farm. I actually do want the bones. I don't need string or spider eye because we've got a good farm for that. <gasps> Smithing templates! Oh yes! Yes! And horse armor! And a golden apple! Oh my goodness! This chest was a good chest. I can sacrifice a paper. Good emeralds. Sand, more golden apples, more templates, depth strider too, hmm, don't really need it, more horse armor, don't need the stone pressure plate, it is pretty exciting when I have so much good loot that I don't know what to keep and what to leave, now we can carefully pillar our way back up, other thing we can find here, Oh, ah, I don't have room. I think we're going to have to plan on coming back and doing the excavation later. Guys, don't let me forget. There is the back corner of the desert temple that we need to excavate sometime. There's going to be some good treasures there. Time to see if we get to ride a camel home. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any camels. Just lots and lots of zombie villagers. Well, that's too bad. I would have loved to have found a camel. But I'm content with the things we did find. So I will bid this unfortunate city farewell and get back on my journey. And I guess while we're all the way out here, I should definitely make sure I'm coming home with a full stack of sand. That's the whole reason we came out searching for a desert. Be a little silly to go home without it. The trip home was rather uneventful. I came across three villages along the way, but I looked in all of them and there was nothing interesting in any of them. But I quickly and safely made my way home with so much excitement in my heart for what we were going to get to do next because of the wonderful things we had found. So I want to talk to you guys real quick about the tall grass. 
If you don't know, the item tall grass is actually kind of rare and very unique. See, the thing with tall grass is if it's in the ground, if it's if it's in your world and you punch it, it breaks. If you break it with shears, it breaks into two pieces of normal sized grass. The Acacia Village is the only place you can find the tall grass item. And you have to leave it as an item or else it, it breaks and becomes normal. So it's kind of random, but it, it is kind of special. So I'll keep it. We also get to complete our wood collection. I'm gonna have to do some farming to build up our mangrove supply, but there it is. All nine wood types. And now what we've all been waiting for, it's time to do some horsing around. So in the episode when we got the horses, I asked for name suggestions down in the comments, and I got some really good ones. The ones I have decided to go for are for the brown horse, Nidus, and for the black horse, Nyx. I really like those names. I like that they both start with the same letter, so it feels like they go together. And next to Minecraft, my next favorite game is Warframe, and two of the Warframes are called Nidus and Nyx. And so, I don't know. I, I just like the names a lot. I really appreciate all the other name suggestions. Keep them coming, but for now, it is time to try out Nidus and Nyx and see how good of horses they are. Hmm, I haven't done too much with horses, so I can't tell just by riding how fast or slow they feel. He's got a decent amount of health. He doesn't feel like the fastest horse. Let's see about jumping. Here's a, here's a two block jump. What? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Guys, Nidus is not a very good jumper. He can't even jump t up two blocks. That's not great. Well, let's give Nyx a try. Mmm. Nyx has more health. And I may have to try this out a little bit and see, but Nyx definitely feels faster. Oh, yep. Nyx can jump two blocks. Oh, Nyx can jump three blocks. Huh. What about four? Nope, not four. I but I bet I bet Nyx could do three and a half blocks. Oh man, yeah. I think Nyx. I think Nyx is gonna be my go-to horse. Oh, this feels so good. Look at us. We're riding a horse. Now I really need to get this bridge in, because then we'll be able to hop on our horse, come right out of the stables, and head all the way off to the spider farm. Got Nyx crossed the river, and I actually am going to head off towards the spider farm. I want to say thank you to you guys so much for watching. Oh, pff, wow. <laughs> I'm going to have to work on my horse driving skills. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this very explory episode. And with the treasures we found, we are now completely ready to move on to the next era of our world. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more, check out my other videos. Hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great day!